Hey guys, Andy from Iron Man here. I'm doing another install video for you. I've had a lot of guys ask if I could give some pointers on installing these inner sea gussets for the Dana 30. They also fit the TJ Rubicon 44. They'll fit on a JK on the upper, but not the lower. I would recommend just using some JK inner sea gussets, but for the XJ, MJ, ZJ, not the WJ, they do not fit in 04 and down the 99 Grand Cherokee, or 99 to 04. Don't fit. The, uh, the coil bucket's in the way. But these fit everything else, they even fit the YJ. And these keep your, your C's from bending under heavy impact. Uh, the most important thing that you do know is that the weld that happens in here on this upper mount is the most important weld. Everything out here is important, but this is where the strength comes from. I'm going to show you this. This is just our upper C mount. I went ahead and ground a 45 degree angle right here. I cleaned up all the weld areas. I ground off all the laser scale. And I ground a 45 degree into these points right here so that it would sit on this the way I wanted to. I also ground this everywhere it's going to weld. I hit it all with a wire wheel and then I hit it with a flap sander, like a flap disc grinder. Uh, one of these guys right here, just to polish it up real nice. So I went ahead and ground every surface area. I obviously took out my ball joints, because if you don't take out the ball joints, they're gonna melt. So do this when you change your ball joints. All right, you just put brand new ones in, carefully take them out, mark where they were, and when you put them back, put them a little differently. And they'll go back in really well. So right off the bat, this guy is going to go right on here. You'll notice that it's notched. The side is not notched. This is to clear the coil. I also ground a 45, look where my finger is, right in that. So the coils do not hit this. All right? This is all nice and clean. I'm going to pop it on there and grab a hammer. Anyway, I'm going to tap this down. So when I look through here, this radius lines up with the underneath of this. And I'm going to tap this back piece all the way this way so I can clear my coil. It should be very snug. I still have a gap here. I did that on purpose when I designed these. Because different ball joint systems sit in different shapes. There's even one that slides down here. So I left a little line here that's etched in the material. Where you can take a portable bandsaw or a cutoff wheel and cut it just a little bit, hammer it down, and then weld it where it needs to be. The welding on this is very important. You want to make sure that in here gets totally filled. And I will show you how I weld that here in a little bit. The back side piece of this is very straightforward as well. This is the bottom piece. It goes behind where you can't see with the camera, but it's very straightforward. It's notched just to clear the bottom of this guy right here. And I also ground some 45s right in here, and I ground off where it's going to weld a little bit. This piece will rest right behind this in these little ribs down here. It's very straightforward. You'll put it up in place. If you have to grind it a little bit because all of these sway bar things are a little different, put that right in there once you got it. Get this all clean. Get this all clean and ground, make sure all your welded surfaces are as clean as possible. And go ahead and tack everything in place. Always snip your tip before you start. I've got this machine set on 17 and a half volts, 175 inches of wire per minute. This is a Millermatic 252. It's probably my favorite easy to use MIG welder. I don't want a whole lot of heat in these welds, but I want it to be strong, so I'm going to tack it 
four or five good places so I know it's not going anywhere once I start welding. Also, if you've never welded before, get a professional to do this. You don't want to screw this up. If you're just starting to weld, you got a machine, get a whole roll of wire, and a whole bottle of gas, use them all up on something that doesn't matter so you know how to use your machine before you start welding on your Jeep. It's too important. I want to show you guys real quick. When I'm welding inside of here, I am going to weld downhill. All right. I'm going to hold this gun uphill and I'm going to weave back and forth nice and slow. And I'm going to let it dig back in here deep. We are adding a ton of metal in here. I hope I don't run out of wire. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it again. And I'll do a full cover pass right over that. That is the strength in this gusset. And I'll come in and weld down here. I'll weld all the way here. I'll probably cut this and hammer it down first. And then everywhere that touches in the back of this, I'm going to weld to this axle fully. So let's spend some time welding. taking the time to let these fill in. If there's a gap in the back, I'll let the wire fill, I'll let the weld build and the heat build. So this entire part becomes one solid piece. Weld all the way down this side. Go ahead and do this whole inside, come down here. And then I'll go back and wash and wash over that to make sure I have a pile of metal in there to keep this guy from ever bending again. tip on me. I don't know if you guys know this trick. If you take your wire and wiggle it around and clean up your nozzle a little bit. Everybody likes to work with a clean nozzle. That whole gap is filled in there. We're totally filled in here. Down the front. I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time. see the color in that. That is nice and warm. On the second weld, I brought the weld all the way out to the edge of this flange. So this entire piece in there, over an inch wide, is all welded. And I'll let the web welders say whatever they want. I've done this over and over again. I've never had any of these move doing it this way. And I've never had one bend after we did this. So it's a really, really good way to keep these guys straight and keep your axle from smiling at least right here. As far as bending between here and here, you can do a truss. The top trussing normally bends it when you weld it. Guys that really raced will tell you that an under truss will keep it from bending, but you lose ground clearance. So that's up to you depending on how your build goes. You'll notice this entire part start to turn the same color. As they cool together, I'm not going to quench them with water. As they cool together, they'll kind of treat the same. This C gusset, or C knuckle I mean, is a forging. You can weld it all you want. It's not a casting. The housing is a casting. Don't weld to that. This forging you can weld to all day long. I went ahead and flipped the axle over. I'm going to let this guy cool off a little bit. The heat's starting to work its way through. And I've got the bottom cleaned up if you want to bring the camera over here. This is our lower C gusset. And you'll see that I went ahead, ground that a little bit so it fits in here just so. See how we'll have a nice weld here, a nice pretty weld along here, up in here. If you want to point the camera right back in there, you can see all in here is going to be a real nice weld area. And if you look straight at it here, it's nice and straight on. We're square, everything fits. 
this is where I want it. I'm going to tack it there if the camera person can close her eyes and just hold the camera. There we go. Don't complain about me not wearing safety gear. It's my video. If anybody leaves that in the comments, well, somebody's gonna. There's nothing I can do about it. We've got it tacked in, so I'm gonna take the time to go ahead and weld this all the way up, and then we will flip this back over and finish welding and doing that cut on the top that I was talking about. I'm gonna start by welding down, cross over, and I'll weld in these seams, work my way to the axle tube. I want to put the heat at the axle tube last, because the less heat I can get in this tube, the better. piece of this, I'm just going to weld these top seams together, and I will be done. This is fully sealed, and this anvil on the bottom will allow water to drain out, so it's not going to fill up the water freezing pump. When I do these welds, I like to start the weld in the bend relief. There's a circle there work my way towards the outside. All that does is visually makes a better looking weld. It doesn't have any benefit otherwise. So you can see fully welded on all the edges, all the way down the side to the bottom, across the back. Had a big old hole there to fill. I triggered it in a little bit, but that's not gonna hurt a thing in the world. Come around here, right back down there. And you can see now, in here close, that is a dirty axle. You can see in that light how big that weld gets on that wash. And it's still a little bit dirty right in there, but that's okay. I'll brush that off, clean it up before I paint it. So my next weld will finish this up. I'll finish the top, and we will be all done with this side. I'm going to go ahead and put the cut in the top of this now. I only cut about halfway through so the material can bend easily with a hammer. Take my high-tech metal bending device. Now that is fully seated. I'll weld here, I'll weld here, here. I'll do the backs and the inside, and we are done. You can see where I welded around the front, put that seam back together, the whole back, a little dipping in that, but it's fine. That's all sealed, but I left that open. The inside here, let me get out of the light. It's fully welded, fully welded with two welds. Come back over. This whole guy is good the whole way. And that's a wrap. All right, that's that. This entire side is done. Let it cool overnight. Don't quench it with water. Just let this entire thing naturally cool. You're not going to get enough heat over here to hurt any axle seals or anything. Um, remember, clean your metal where you're going to weld. Don't try to weld through all this garbage. It'll just spit back and make a mess, and you won't get any true welding. You'll just get really frustrated. So. Check us out on Iron Man, IronMan4x4Fab.com. We've got these inner sea gusset kits for about $65 to $70 ships, somewhere in that range. Um, we sold a whole bunch of them. That's why I'm making this video, because you guys were needing the help on how to install them. If you need anything else on there, you can always call us. Um, click your like button, your subscribe, and all that YouTube stuff. And uh, give us a follow, and thank you for your business. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.